Improper caching on Adobe Commerce can lead to some really nasty performance problems. We're going to look at one of those problems today and how to ultimately resolve it in a pretty good way. The way we approach this is we ask a question with a given scenario, and then we dive into three different potential answers. This helps sharpen our mind to be able to give a very quick answer when presented with a similar problem when talking to a merchant or as a merchant to our other technical the members on our team. Let's take a look here at this question. You are helping a merchant on Adobe Commerce troubleshoot a caching problem. They use an external Redis database used by this other company's other applications meaning it's shared. Unfortunately, they report that every time a code is that every time code is delivered to production, these other applications caches are also reset. How do you resolve this problem? Well, we have three different answers. Now, be thinking right now how you would resolve this problem and ideally drop a link or drop in a comment up here below because I would love to hear if you have other ideas other than what I am presenting here. Certainly would be nice to know that. We have three different options here. Let's take a look at each one of these individually. Number one, configure a cache prefix in app Etsy config.php to ensure separation of caching entries. Now, on the surface, this could be a seemingly good option, but the reality is this is actually only a partial answer. Why is this a partial answer? Well, because a cache prefix is going to, yes, help separate out these caching entries in a Redis database but it doesn't affect the overall Magento cache clearing flushing operations. It just adds a prefix in there. Um, ultimately, you would need to adjust the overall Adobe Commerce uh, processes in order to make this option work. So thus, A, it gets a big X because it is not a full answer. So moving on to answer B. Is this one correct? Change the deploy system away from using cache flush to use the cache clean CLI command. Okay, well, this one also on the surface might seem uh, reasonable. And I think we could all argue that there's some truth in this, except for the fact that, again, this requires additional changes through the Adobe Commerce system. That aside, the other issue is what's the difference between cache flush and cache clean cache flush basically is like a delete from a table in MySQL terms it basically clears everything it's like a truncate clears everything out of this table now on the other hand cache clean says what tags do I have in the system and it cle cleans out by this cache tag so um, it's basically hey for each each one of these tags in the system let's clean them all out which means we have the opportunity to continually increase the size of our Redis database less than optimal in that way. Thus, cache flush is generally the right option. So I'm going to put another X on this one. While yes, one could technically consider this sort of an answer, I think we would all agree it is a bad answer. So thus, let's move on from B. Take a look at C. Configure the Adobe Commerce application to use a different Redis database. Now, based off of the fact that I have X'd or axed or chosen against or deleted these other two answers, I think we can use the process of elimination to say, well, yeah, B, uh, C is the right answer. But I think it also warrants a little bit more explanation. Here's the thing. In this type of a question, and there's a host of different areas that this could apply to, um, not just Redis caches in general, we have to remember that anytime we have application sharing a central piece of information or central storage area, there's a possibility for cross-contamination. Um, we could have, well, in the case of this question, we could have a delete that cleans out cache entries or more cache entries than we really would want to be cleaned out. Uh, we could also have potential pollution. It's probably unlikely, but let's say this other application actually shares some of the same keys as our Magento application. Um, we've all had situations in the code where something lives longer in memory than it should. Well, this is kind of a bit of the same idea, but just in a database context. Thus, uh, using a completely different database is ideal. So remember, in Redis, we have databases zero on up. or is it, Yeah, I think it's zero on up all the way through infinity, I guess, but that wouldn't be a good idea either. Uh, and so at, at a very basic level, 
at least your Adobe Commerce application should be pointed to a its own unique Redis databases. Now remember, um, page cache goes into Varnish, but we have uh, other ca the basic system caches as well as we have um, we have user sessions. So that should at least be two databases right there in Redis um, and potentially using a couple more at that point. So ultimately, out of the default of 10 Redis databases, we have the capability to utilize eight other tables. I mean, it's probably a better term kind of in MySQL terminology. We can use other these other boxes, tables, or databases. They're called databases for this other, other applications information. Pretty easy to set up. But all that to say, I don't think that's even a good answer as it is because we should have a complete separation of responsibilities. If you think about it, if somehow this Redis database gets attacked, there is a possibility that this blast radius would extend over onto the e-commerce side. In other words, if they get access to all the keys, all the values in there, there could be some user data. There could be, well, if it's session stored in there, there would be email addresses, other personally identifiable information, which we don't want that either. So putting a firewall in between your uh, e-commerce hosting and your other app web application hosting is not a bad idea. It's not going to cost that much more per month to spin up a separate Redis host um, or however one wants to manage that, use a service, whatever, it's not going to cost that much more. So keep in mind, let's have a separation of responsibilities as we configure these environments. Um, and ultimately, you know, this has implications for our, our local development machines. Um, make sure we use that spread of uh, Redis databases in that kind of a scenario as well. So I hope you found this helpful as your Knowledge Byte of the Week.